Hi there. Hi. Welcome back. It's been a little while. I'm curious how exciting it is, therefore, to know that you're fighting in just a couple of days. It is very exciting, and it's a long time in the, ma- in the, coming, in the making. Um, I never stopped training, though. Um, even through my injury, through my pregnancy, through my recovery, I never stopped training. So it was just a matter of time. I knew I was going to be here. Is there a part of it where, obviously, you're out, you're living your life, that now you get to come back to it, there's an extra level of excitement. You know, you've, had, you've had time to miss this, essentially. So it's not exactly the ability to perform because, I, I mean, I'm a coach, right? So I, I get to be surrounded by people that I love and I get to perform for them and I get to put on a show. Um, but it's being in the arena. So I haven't been in an audience since 2019 when I first fought for the UFC because everything else was at the apex. So... Being able to compete in front of, you know, thousands of my best friends, <laughs> that's going to be the, the, the big um, excitement for me. It's not just getting back into the cage. It's getting back with an audience. Yeah. And what a fight to be doing it against Mishu Tate, a legend of yeah. MMA. I mean, does that add extra motivation for you, fighting a woman who's been around forever? She's done everything. Is that extra exciting for you? Absolutely, that's exciting for me. I mean, she's a former champion. She's amazing. She's done wonders for my division and for women's MMA. Um, I remember there was a memory that popped up on my Facebook that she retired seven years ago, and I'm like, all right, the Bantam division's open. I can come in, and that was seven years ago, and now I get to fight her. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of cool how, like, I'm manifesting and everything's coming around. Yeah. Is there a part of you that when you look at a fight like this, you can sort of imagine yourself maybe 20 years in the future and you look back at your resume of women you fought and you'd be like, wow, to have Misha Tate's name on there next to a W for me, would that be extra exciting for you? Is that something that you ever think about? That is, um, I mean, that, that's great. I, I'm going to love that. But I, I already have, my resume is actually pretty good already. I've beat a lot of people in their prime. I beat the former champion, Nico Montano, um, before she became the champion. Uh, she actually dropped down a division. Actually, the majority of the people that I fought have changed divisions after me. So, uh, I mean, I'd like to think that, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just making up stories in my head. But Every win is great for me, and having a win over Misha Tate, I think, would just solidify how good I actually am and can be. You mentioned fighting women in their prime. I don't want you to discredit your opponent, but do you believe Misha's still in her prime, or do you think maybe she's on the t- rather towards the end of her career? Listen, I just became a mom. She's only two years older than I am. Like, we good. We still hot moms. We're, we're okay. Like, I, she will figure out when it is time for her and when her passion for this sport in competing is over. I am, if she still wants to be in her prime, it's not me, for me to judge. Okay. And last one for me, it's the cliche question, but how do you actually see the fight itself playing out? Listen, so she has made a very long and successful career shooting and wrestling. Uh, people don't like getting hit by me. So um, I fully expect her to shoot. I fully expect her to wrestle. Um, And I fully expect to beat the hell out of her. (laughs) Hey, Julia, over here. Hi. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about, like, some of the challenges that went into, I guess, not only just fight camp, but life, you know, bringing a new life into the world and still competing at, you know, the high level UFC? Absolutely. So there are a lot of challenges. Um, Specifically, my body did not react like some of these other wonderful female MMA fighters that have um, had a a child and come back. Um, Like I said, I worked out every single day of my um, pregnancy Uh, within limitations. I did have a knee surgery, but... um, I went up to 225 pounds, and I was huge. I lost almost 100 pounds. I'm going to be almost 100 pounds difference from this time last year. And I don't think people realize the effort and the struggle and the pain that I had to go through and my team had to go through and witness. Um, But I I would do it all over again if I needed to. I don't need to, luckily. (laughs) I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to see this through, and there's going to be a, a title in my future, um, and that's the goal. That's quite a, quite a difference there on the 100 pounds. Uh, was there ever any, any doubts in your mind that, like, maybe I'm done, like when you saw? 
Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, I knew, so what had happened is I was supposed to fight Raquel Pennington December of 2021, uh, time traveling. Uh, 22, sorry, this, 21? 21, yes, December of 2021. And uh, I blew out my knee, ACL meniscus surgery, right? So I look at my husband and I go, hey, do you wanna try for a kid? And he's like, yeah, totally. Uh, within a year, or within a month, I was pregnant. And so I compounded those two situations and I was planning it from day one, like, okay, I'm gonna come back at this amount of time. And luckily, uh, well, my body, <laughs> my body tried to hold me back for a little bit, but um, I definitely did get to the point where I was like, all right, it's time to hit, hit it hard and got the weight off and here I am. And like during that whole time, like, are you, are you watching more film? Like, how are you kind of like keeping your mindset like on fighting, like throughout that whole transition? I'm just focusing on me. Uh, I mean, she has as many losses as I have wins, right? So I'm not going to learn anything that I haven't already seen from her. And I'm going to focus on my faults and play my game. I'm not going to really focus on her. Like, I, I, I know what she's going to do. I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to surprise me. But even if there is, I have an amazing corner, corners that will uh, guide me through success. Hey, Julia, welcome back. Thank you. Um, during this training camp, is there like a specific, you know, thing that you focused on to prepare for this challenge coming up? Absolutely. I knew she was going to wrestle. So uh, being in the great state of Oklahoma, um, that's what we focused on was wrestling. And I'd actually, I knew that that was one of my faults uh, after my Sarge Eubanks fight. I mean, she took me down at will and uh, I didn't have a response to that. So that was something that I worked on since that fight. And I'd had been working on um, knowing that I'm gonna be fighting Misha Tate. Like, all right, cool. So let's work on that. My striking's crisp work on my footwork a little bit, but I really got to get my wrestling down, so. And since it's been a long layover, do you think, you know, stepping in in front of the big lights, in front of all those people, is, is that going to be a little factor in there? It's been a long time. Of course it's not going to be a factor. I am a showboat. I love having the camera on me. Um, I'm very much like my daughter, where as soon as there's a camera, it's showtime. I love to perform for people. I love people to feel what I'm feeling, right? I want everyone to get that excitement because when I win, it's not just me. It's my team that's behind me. It's my corners that are behind me. It's the cameraman that's behind the camera that's capturing every blood, every drip of sweat. Like, I want everyone to feel it. So I love the camera. It's great. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.